We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The Call of Cthulhu, H.P. Lovecraft, 1928. I'm the Pink Reaper, and this is why cosmic horror creates a different kind of dread than any horror subgenre. What is a scarier method of storytelling than one that leaves you pondering your own place in the world, one that reminds you of your insignificance in the never-ending blackness of our universe? Cosmic horror makes use of the philosophical concepts of existential nihilism and overall philosophical pessimism. In these stories, we get the sense that ordinary life is but a veil over a world so foreign and abstract that just imagining it is enough to scar a person's sanity. It is said that cosmic horror and its derivative literary philosophy of cosmicism was developed by legendary writer H.P. Lovecraft and these so-called Lovecraftian themes have been adapted by writers ever since. Here are some cosmic horror films to watch during your quarantine. The Thing, 1982. One film in cosmic horror that many will have seen or at least heard of is John Carpenter's The Thing, 1982 based on the novella Who Goes There from John W. Campbell Jr. and previously adapted under The Thing from Another World, 1951. The story is about a group of American researchers stationed in Antarctica who, after catching a loose sled dog, quickly discover that they have taken in a parasitic alien life form which assimilates and imitates other organisms. They soon realize that they can no longer trust each other while The Thing picks them off one by one. While in The Thing, our protagonists are able to fight the antagonist, the movie also plays with the concept of the unknown and distrust. The characters slowly but surely lose their sanity while their paranoia takes over. If every part of The Thing is an individual life form, will they ever manage to really destroy it? Will they ever be able to trust another person again? Uzumaki, 2000. Some might be familiar with the work of Japanese mangaka Junji Ito, Famous for many stories, among which is his Uzumaki manga series, which was later adapted into a feature film of the same name. Although the film has not gotten amazing reviews, nor does it do a good job at building a sense of dread, Ito's story remains captivating. We follow a young girl whose boyfriend's father becomes increasingly obsessed with spirals, only to have the town follow his lead after his death. Not just the town folk, but the whole town, including the air and clouds, form spirals. In Uzumaki, we do not get an explanation for the obsessions over the spirals, nor a way to fight the spiral curse. Our protagonist just has to endure what is happening to her town, and patiently wait for the spirals to get to her. This is the real horror of the story. In 2021, an Uzumaki anime series will be released by Tsunami. Annihilation, 2018 A more modern example of cosmic horror is Alex Garland's 2018 movie Annihilation, based on the 2014 novel of the same name by Jeff van der Meer. The story is about a group of explorers who are sent to investigate the Shimmer, an invasive anomalous zone which emerged from a meteor a few years prior. A part of this team is Lena, played by Natalie Portman. Lena's husband was part of an earlier expedition and reappeared after a year unable to explain how he came back. As many exploratory teams have entered before, and only Lena's husband has ever returned, Lena is to join the next team to enter the Shimmer. Lena and her team find many mutated plants and animals before they start to uncover the truth about the Shimmer, which functions as a prism for DNA. It mutates and distorts anything in its boundaries. Annihilation drags you down the rest of the cosmic rabbit hole and leaves you with an eerie sense of confusion well after the film has ended. Love, Death and Robots Beyond the Aquila Rift, Netflix. The seventh episode of Netflix Love, Death, and Robots perfectly captures the Lovecraftian cosmic horror aspects in a beautifully animated short film. It is based on Alastair Reynolds' book of the same name. The story is set in a freight spaceship where Tom wakes up from his search tank only to find out that they went off course. He meets an old friend, Greta, but things are not as they seem. And this episode is definitely one of the best short stories I have ever seen.